So this is part six of the unit of structures of simple solids. And in the previous part, we looked at close packed structures. And obviously there's some holes in these structures where the spheres don't fill up the spaces completely. So we're going to take a look at the holes and even how to calculate the size of the sphere that we can place inside the hole. So we'll talk about four different holes. The first two are shown on this slide. The first one is a trigonal hole, where if we have three atoms together or three spheres together, you can see the trigonal hole um, in the center represented by the red dot over here. <coughs> if we have a tetrahedral structure, uh, which consists of four atoms or four spheres that you can see here is in where the red dot is, is where the tetrahedral hole will be. And it's quite clear on the bottom diagram over here that you'd be able to fit uh, a small sphere in, in that space where there is a hole. The other two holes that we'll talk about, the first one is an octahedral hole. So an octahedral hole is when we have six atoms um, or six spheres in close proximity, packed in close proximity to one another. Um, and you can, you can see that there will be a hole over here where we can fit a small sphere, and it's clearly indicated to you by the red uh, dot in the center on that diagram. And the last one is uh, the cubic hole where we have eight atoms together, and you know that the space is in, in this instance where we've looked at cubic packing before. The hole is pretty large, and you can see it's indicated by the red sphere over here. It then becomes possible for us to calculate the size of a sphere in an octahedral hole. If we're calculating the size of the, of, of the sphere, the calculation is shown to you um, on the slide. You can take some time to work through it on your own. Um, you, at this point, I recommend that you pause the video so that you can actually study the diagram on the right hand side over here and then work through the calculation that appears down the bottom of the screen over here. A similar procedure will exist for the size of a sphere in a tetrahedral hole. Okay, um, again, the diagrams are constructed for you on the left hand side here. Once again, pause the video so that you can work through this solution on your own and see how to calculate the size of the sphere that can be fitted into a tetrahedral hole. Okay, there's, there's also some practice exercises uh, that you can do and that will help you understand. Um, you can do examples 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4, and 3.5 in the textbook. Um, and there's diagrams for example 3.3 and for example 3.4. Uh, they may look a little familiar to you. They're just um, means of calculating the size of holes um, in uh, um, the, the different packed structures that you have learned about already. Okay, there are some examples of uh, solid state packing. Um, obviously, this can apply to metallic crystals, where most of them crystallize in body centered cubic, or cubic close packed, or face centered cubic, and hexagonal close packed. Um, if we change the temperature and pressure, we will probably change the crystal from one structure to another. I'll deal more with that in a later part of this unit. Atoms are essentially not hard spheres. You know that they are sort of malleable, if I can say that, because they have electron clouds um, which can move. And we can't always rely on simple geometry calculations as metal atoms have different electronic configurations. On this slide is just some examples of crystal structures that are adopted by metals under normal conditions. So you'll see there for hexagonal close pack structures, you have the majority of um, these, these metals present. Okay. For cubic close pack structures, we have these metals here. Uh, for body centered cubic, uh, you will see that we have these metals here. And then to the best of my knowledge, the only primitive cubic 
uh, structure is that for polonium. On this slide, we have a very crude periodic table that indicates the type of packing that is evident in certain uh, elements of the periodic table. I don't require you to know this, but it's just simply for interest's sake. 